I'm Roy Schwartz. I write about pop culture for The Ford and for CNN.com. And I am the author of Is Superman Circumcised? The Complete Jewish History of the World's Greatest Hero. You may have heard of the book. Uh, among other things, it won the illustrious Diagram Prize for Oddest Book Title in the World 2021, which I am prouder of than I should be. <clears throat> Superman first appeared in June 1938 in Action Comics number one. If you remember from part one, he was created by two 17-year-olds, Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster. He was the first superhero and he was an instant hit. In response, the publishers uh, commissioned a second one. And so Batman debuted in May 1939's Detective Comics 27. He was created by Bob Kane, born Robert Kahn, and uh, writer Bill Finger, Milton Finger, who later co-created Green Lantern. <clears throat> Batman became the yin to Superman's yang, and pretty much every superhero since can be placed somewhere on the spectrum between the two. As legend has it, uh, Kane and Finger developed Batman over a single weekend. Kane came up with the name and initial concept, inspired by Leonardo da Vinci's ornithopter design, which you see here. Uh, he, his design included a red bodysuit, uh, black trunks, small domino mask, and bat-like um, hang glider wings. On the suggestion of Finger, the costume was made gray and black with blue highlights with a bat chest emblem, serrated cape, and cow with pointy ears, the familiar Batman. Finger also conceived the alter ego of millionaire playboy Bruce Wayne and his tragic origin story, as well as Gotham City, a nickname for New York coined by Washington Irving, the guy who wrote Sleepy Hollow. Together, they created the Batcave, Batmobile, Robin, Commissioner Gordon, Joker, Penguin, Catwoman, Two-Face, Clayface, Riddler, Scarecrow, and much, much else. However, Batman wasn't an original character. He was a, a Frankenstein's monster stitched together almost entirely from pre-existing ideas, but one so good that he surpassed them all. Uh, Kane and Finger based him visually and conceptually on the 1930 film The Bat Whispers, it was a horror film, uh, and proto-superhero pulp magazine characters The Black Bat, The Shadow, and Zorro. <clears throat> the Shadow and Zorro were inspired in turn by the Scarlet Pimpernel, a 1903 British play and following novel series by Baroness Emma Orksey. Orksey, yes about an aristocrat who's secretly a heroic swordsman and escape artist who helps French royals escape the guillotine, the terror. The Pimpernel likewise inspired Swedish, Swedish diplomat Raoul Wallenberg to save as many as 100,000 Hungarian Jews from the Nazis by issuing them uh, Swedish papers. He's honored as a righteous among the nations at Yad Vashem, as you see here. Kane and Finger were both Jews of Eastern European descent. Finger was a first-generation American, Kane was a second. Both lived in the South Bronx, which it was known as the Jewish borough. It was a predominantly Jewish neighborhood at the time, and slightly more upscale than the hard scrabble Lower East Side. 
they knew each other from high school, very much like uh, Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster, who met in high school in Cleveland. They both attended the uh, DeWitt Clinton High in the Bronx, which still exists, along with other comic book luminaries, <clears throat> including Will Eisner, uh, Erwin Hassan, Stan Lee, as well as um, James Baldwin. They created Batman around the age of 24, hashing out stories in the neighborhood Poe Park. Batman's publisher, DC, uh, which was actually named after Detective Comics, Batman's home title. So when you say DC Comics, you're really saying Detective Comics Comics. Uh, so DC was owned by Harry Donenfeld and Jack Leibowitz, born Yaakov Leibovich, Jewish street toughs from the Lower East Side turned entrepreneurs. Along with comic books for kids, they also published nudie mags. And before that, Donenfeld made a living bootlegging moonshine from Canada during Prohibition. Uh, he was friends with um, Frank Costello, the head of the Luciano crime family. Comic books weren't quite as cutthroat, but they were a hard business. Uh, there are different versions to the story, but the likely account is that Kane managed to obtain ownership rights of Batman, extremely rare at the time, by lying that he was underage when he had signed the contract, forcing DC to renegotiate. Uh, eventually getting him a slice of the pie. Unfortunately for Finger, who worked with Kane as a hired ghostwriter, not a partner, Kane received sole credit, legally and in the byline, as the creator of Batman. Despite Finger's contributions, he was denied any recognition by Kane until well after his death. Kane became a rich man, uh, hobnobbing with the likes of Sammy Davis Jr., Muhammad Ali, uh, Francis Ford Coppola, Fidel Castro, he even got a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Finger became an alcoholic, dying penniless and obscure at age 60 in 1974. Eventually, Finger's credit was restored following a continued acknowledgement and lobbying by several industry professionals, mostly Jewish. Uh, it's the subject of the 2017 Hulu documentary, Batman and Bill, which I highly recommend. The result is that since October 2015, all Batman comics and media appearances say Batman created by Bob Kane with Bill Finger. In December 2017, Finger even got a street named after him, Bill Fingerway, on East 192nd Street in Grand Concourse in the Bronx. It's the southwest corner of Poe Park. Batman had many Jewish stewards since, notably artist Jerry Robinson, uh, who co-created Robin and the Joker, uh, Julie Schwartz, no relation, who was the editor for 14 years, Paul Levitz, who succeeded Schwartz in 78 and helped return the Dark Knight from the 60s camp, you know, the Adam West, na 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 kind of, to his, his noir grim roots, uh, later becoming DC president and publisher, uh, Levitz Booby, by the way, uh, came from the same Rutter Shtetl as Jerry Siegel's father. There is uh, Jeanette Kahn, an Orthodox rabbi's daughter, who was DC's publisher, president, and editor-in-chief from 76 to 2002. And more recently, Tom King, who's been one of the principal writers of Batman for the last few years. In 1979, a Jewish entertainment lawyer from New Jersey named Michael Uslin, a childhood bat fan who's also, um, he also taught the first accredited college course on comics in 1972 at Indiana University. He partnered with Jewish uh, producer Benjamin Mellinker to buy the movie rights for Batman from a disinterested DC. The thinking at the time was that there was no money in superhero movies. It took him another decade to get a studio on board, uh, but the result was 1989's Batman starring Michael Keaton, which was of course a mega hit. Uh, as well as a bona fide cultural phenomenon known as Batmania. Uh, Uslan has served as executive producer of every Batman movie since. He also has two memoirs, which I highly recommend you, you pick up. They're very interesting, and he's a, he's a really nice guy. Batman's cinematic history includes several other uh, uh, noteworthy Jewish contributions, including screenwriter Akiva Goldsman and director Joel Schumacher, 
who subjected unsuspecting audiences to the derisable Batman Forever and Batman and Robin in the late 90s, as well as David Goyer, uh, despite the surname, also Jewish, uh, co-writer of the Christian Bale trilogy. There's also been some notable on-screen representation. The 2014 to 2019 TV series Gotham starred David Mazoz, an observant Sephardic Jew, as a young Bruce Wayne. It was sort of a becoming Batman story. Uh, 2019's Joker movie uh, starring Joaquin Phoenix, who is maternally Jewish. More interesting, though, is Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman in this year's The Batman, uh, the one saying Robert Pattinson. She is the daughter of Lisa Bonet and Lenny Kravitz, who are both Jewish. Uh, and she trailblazed as both a, a Jewess who finally gets to play the sexy femme fatale instead of the quirky girl next door cliche, but also as a Jew of color, an identity so um, underrepresented in American culture that it might seem an incongruity. And I'll talk more about that kind of uh, stuff in the upcoming Moon Knight episode. And it's ironic given that only about half of world Jewry is Ashkenazi. In Israel, it's roughly a third of the population, or about half of the Jewish population, um, although the Israeli Central Bureau of Statistics only traces paternal uh, country of origin and only one generation back, so it's sort of impossible to really say. Cain himself had an ambivalent or even indifferent attitude towards his Jewishness. He grew up, socialized, and worked in a predominantly Jewish milieu, uh, but he never mentions being Jewish anywhere in interviews or in his autobiography, Batman and Me, except for one telling mention of a home-cooked meal of matzo ball soup and chopped liver. Bruce Wayne was something of a personal avatar for Kane, uh, modeled after himself, or perhaps the other way around. Uh, they share the similar names, Bruce Wayne and Bob Kane, and back in the day, both uh, smoked pipes and wore ascots. Uh, Kane aspired to waspiness, he even legally changed his name from uh, Khan to Kane, and Wayne in many ways was his means, both in fantasy but also through the riches he brought. Catwoman, by the way, was also modeled after real-life uh, women, including Jewish movie star Hedy Lamar, Hedwig Kiesler, and allegedly Kane's first cousin, Ruth Steele. Um, Kane and Finger were friends with Jerry Siegel, Superman's co-creator, and some historians have theorized that Batman's origin story, the murder of his, of his parents, was inspired by the real-life death of Siegel's father, who suffered a heart attack while his clothing store was being robbed in uh, Cleveland. Others have seen their murder as a reflection of the Jewish fear, particularly at the time, and especially after Kristallnacht, the, the origin was published only a few months after, of safety and security shattered by violence, you know, in the middle of the night, as Jews were being gunned down in the streets of Europe against a backdrop of Gothic architecture. Either way, following Superman and Batman, most superheroes were orphaned of at least one, though usually both of their parents, and usually by violence. Uh, a short list includes uh, Superman, Batman, Captain Marvel, uh, renamed Shazam, uh, Captain America, Aquaman, Flash, Green Lantern, Spider-Man, Iron Man, Daredevil, and Wolverine, and that's just a short list. Other Jewish themes and preoccupations can be found in Batman's comics. In World War II, like the rest of the superheroes, most of which were created by Jews, Batman enlisted to fight the Nazis. In Batman 14, for example, which you see here, he busts a Nazi spy ring uh, by swinging off a swastika-shaped chandelier, no less. On the cover of Batman 18, he hawked war bonds and stamps while blowing a giant dynamite stick in the face of Hitler, Hirohito, and Mussolini. There's all these kind of examples. Um, there isn't much following, though one noteworthy instance is the landmark 1988-1989 uh, a death in the family storyline, uh, world famous amongst comic book fans, where the Joker steals a nuclear missile and tries to sell it to Lebanese terrorists who plan to blow up Tel Aviv. Uh, when Batman foils the plan, Ayatollah Khomeini himself appoints Joker as the Iranian ambassador to the UN, which, uh, given the regime, is only slightly more bonkers than reality. Um, 
the Joker gives a speech at the General Assembly, this rambling speech, in which he equates Iran's fundamentalism with his own insanity, then predictably tries to, to kill everybody with his laughing gas. Superman shows up to save the day. Uh, a two-issue story in 1991 Detective Comics titled The Golem of Gotham is essentially a retelling of The Golem of Prague. Uh, it introduced the Jewish neighborhood of East Hamilton, which in the story is beleaguered by a gang of white supremacists. Uh, an Orthodox Holocaust survivor creates a golem to defend it. The golem gets out of hand, goes on a killing rampage, and is stopped when the letter E is erased from its forehead. As you know, the legend Emet and Aleph becomes Met and, and that kind of stuff. We have a whole thing about the golem that I believe is episode 9. There's also a twisted Moses allegory hidden in 1992's Batman Returns, where the penguin is given a new origin story as a baby tossed into a river in a wicker basket by his parents because he's too ugly, uh, who grows up to become, uh, he grows up to plot his revenge by abducting and killing all of the firstborns of Gotham's sons. So it's a very warped Moses kind of thing. Uh, Batman ha also has one of the most Jewish supporting casts in comics. There's Ragman, aka Rory Reagan, born Regano his father was born Reganowicz, a fellow Gotham crime fighter who has uh, he has a connection to the Golem. There's Tim Drake, the third Robin, and my personal favorite, who, according to online murmurings, was planned to was intended to be revealed as Jewish, but it never came up came uh, to be. Instead, uh, for the sake of diversity, they made him bisexual recently. Um, and then there's Whistle, a new Gotham City hero who debuted in September 2021, very recently, who's not just openly, but prominently Jewish. And she is a high school student named Willow Zimmerman, who lives in Downriver, based on the Lower East Side. My guess is that the editors forgot about uh, East Hamilton from the 90s. She has her own graphic novel, which is, is great and a very uh, all ages friendly story. The most prominent Jewish character in Batman's world is Harley Quinn, a villain turned anti-hero turned sometimes hero from Benson Hoist, Brooklyn. She debuted in 1992's Batman the Animated Series as the Joker's Girl Friday. Uh, so, you know, the Joker may be a mass murderer, but at least we know he's not an anti-Semite. Uh, she was based on and voiced by real-life Jewish actress and comedian Arlene Sorkin, who gave her this borscht belt humor and stereotypical Brooklyn accent. And Harley was meant to be Jewish. She constantly peppered, from her very first appearance, she constantly peppered her dialogue with um, oi and plots and that kind of stuff, but it wasn't made explicit until years later. When it finally was, it was made uh, she was made paternally Jewish in the comics, uh, maternally Jewish in her own animated series, and left nondescript in the Margot Robbie movies. Uh, today, she's DC's most popular character after the Trinity, uh, Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman, which is not bad for a, a Shayna Maidel. A funny thing happened on the way to the Batcave. Uh, Batman accidentally became Jewish. In September 2006, DC introduced a new Batwoman, <clears throat> a reconceived version of a 1956 character uh, named Catherine Rebecca Kane, Kate Kane, uh, named in honor of Bob Kane. She was made Bruce Wayne's maternal cousin, her father Jacob and his mother Martha being siblings. They also made her and her father explicitly Jewish. She's been seen uh, celebrating Hanukkah, reading Kabbalah, all kinds of stuff. Uh, Kate's deceased mother, um, Gabrielle, is only implicitly Jewish in the comics, though it was made explicit in the Batwoman TV show on CW, which also gave her the maiden name Goldstein. Uh, but unless her father converted, which has not been mentioned, that would make Martha Jewish too. And since Judaism is matrilineal, that makes Bruce Wayne Jewish, at least halakhically Jewish. The Batman show, by the way, marks a first for a Jewish superhero lead on television. 
Um, and it was handled well. It was apparent, but incidental. They didn't hide it in the background, but also, it, wasn't, it also wasn't tokenistic. She didn't like just use her Yiddish here or there. It was sort of part of her identity, but not too much of it. It was very sort of, you know, um, incidental. As for Batman's inadvertent Judaism, it was summarily ignored and never mentioned. However, in October 2018's Batman comic, Bruce Wayne discusses his father's Christian faith, revealing that they'd attended church, the Waynes are of Scottish descent, that's been established, and declares his atheism. Pointedly though, he says, my father was a Christian, not my parents. And when his butler and confidant, Alfred, you know, Alfred Pennyworth, uh, died in last year's detective comics, uh, Bruce places a stone on his headstone, which is, a, of course, a Jewish custom. It's not a lot to go on, and he probably works better as a rich, sheltered wasp whose world is torn asunder when his parents are murdered. Um, but in the adult reader's comic Batman Damned, one thing that DC did bother, bother to make clear for some reason, he is circumcised. Thank you for watching. This has been the second part of the series, Secret Identities, the Jewish origins of your favorite superheroes, exclusively for Orange County Community Scholar Program members. Uh, please join me next time for part three, Spider-Man.